So the SSH protocol is well known for being able to remotely administer servers. It also can encapsulate and tunnel other types of traffic such as port forwarding, or you can also use it as a proxy. And this becomes very handy because if you are wanting to administer a remote network and you don't want to go through the trouble of setting up a full VPN, or it's just not really necessary because of the services you need to access are just some browser-based services, then tunneling through a proxy works really well. So we're going to go from my computer here, 192.168.3.9, the computer we're recording on and we'll be doing this demo on. We're going to first connect to this DigitalOcean server, and we're going to show you also how you connect to a PFSense firewall through SSH, and then so I can get to servers that are behind it. And we use this for remote administration of some of our clients because it's just a really convenient way to be able to jump right in and pivot into their network without having to set up a full VPN. Now, proxies don't support the full protocol stack as a VPN does. Proxies are much more simplistic. VPNs allow you to connect to larger networks together or even your individual computer and essentially bridge all full protocols into that network. And there's times when you need a VPN, but for some of the basic, just I want to get to remote web administration on a server, proxies work absolutely great. Now, someone may say, what are, is the data going across the proxy secure? Well, in the case of SSH, you're encapsulating the proxy data. So the proxy data may or may not be secured, but that becomes irrelevant if you're tunneling it in an SSH tunnel. That way you're always wrapping in a security layer. So when I go from here to this London Digital Ocean or to my house, the encapsulation layer is going from here and being unencapsulated within the network. So that would prevent anyone from sniffing it across the internet. And then it's just reliant on whatever protocols are being used. So from here to here is using HTTPS, you're perfectly fine in terms of security. All right, let's kind of show this in practice and show how it works. It's actually really simple. Now, first thing is there's nothing special that had to be done with either PFSense other than turning on SSH server. And this DigitalOcean server is out of the box pretty much default. The only thing I did was have to get update to make sure it had the latest updates on there. You should always be doing that. And I loaded my uh, command line on there, which there's a link to GitHub below if you like the command line that you see here. So other than that, it's the default SSHD server out of the box. Let's go over here to the terminal. So the first thing we want to do is make sure we can log into this server. So this is the digital server, digital ocean server IP address 104.248.168.203. And we're in, we can get into the server, perfect. Now, that's just a standard SSH command to log in. For those of you wondering, I've already installed my SSH keys on there, and so I can log in without prompted for a password. I'm gonna exit, now we're gonna add the proxy information. So dash D, we're gonna choose port 9055. This is up to you. The port you choose to set up a dynamic proxy, it only has to be known by you not in use, so preferably, because I'm not running this with sudo, something above 1024, or you could assign it to a lower port. Uh, some people like to use 8080. I just chose 9055. It's really are up to you which port you want to use. So we're going to do ssh-d, go here to root at the IP address, and log in. And from the, com from the command prompt why, nothing else seems to have changed, but now we have added port 9055 as the proxy port. We're going to go over here, and I have Firefox open. Now, I have ifconfig.co slash country. ifconfig is a website that will display public IP address information. We'll refresh it right here. It shows me in the United States. And we have the proxy settings pulled up here. And by default, we have no proxy. We're going to go ahead, go to manual proxy configuration, 127001, because we bound this to our local host of this computer. And by the way, this is all in Linux, if you didn't notice already. You can do this within Windows. There are separate tutorials for that using tools like PuTTY. But here's the local host. Here is the 9055. And we're going to hit OK. We're going to go over back over here. Refresh. United Kingdom. Matter of fact, let's go ifconfig without the slash country. And it zoomed in here. We get it back to 100%. There's that IP address. Country lookup, all the information that you find, which is, I love this, I have config.co. It's a simple way to get some information about, you know, where you're at. And let's go ahead and surf the web here. Open up Google. Weather. Just do a weather forecast for Google. 
think it thinks I'm in the UK. So I can surf the web, I can use this. Uh, it brings up all local search results based Singer IP. Google does that stuff. So I'm surfing the web perfectly fine and it works. So this is simply proxied over there. No firewall needed, no special config needed, I should say, uh, no VPN needed. I'm proxied in via SSH tunnel across there. And that's great. The downside of this is having to set that proxy up all the time and having to make sure that this is done. And also you may have noticed when you connect to a proxy because not all protocols are supported, it may have tried to look up things that aren't. So you're gonna get some uh, administratively prohibited failed. You may have some problems with that. Like I said, this is not the same as a VPN, but it can instantly get you over there. And we're talking more about how we use it to get inside of a client network. And I'm gonna talk about ways to make this tool a little bit easier use all from the Linux command line here. So we're going to go back over to no proxy, refresh, and I'm back in the United States. All right, so Firefox is back to being Firefox to normal. And we want to log in with this dynamic proxy again, just like that. So really nothing changed. I just logged out uh, to break any connections that may have been open. And we're going to SSH again. We're going to change the port number to 9050. And the only reason I've changed 9050 is that is the default port for proxy chains. So let's talk about what are proxy chains. Proxy chains is a Unix program, Linux program in this case, uh, that hooks network related functions and dynamically allows us to wrap everything into a proxy chain. So let's dig into a little bit more what that means. So we're gonna go ahead and go through, and like I said, I'll leave a link so you can read all this, but we're gonna go ahead and get a connection started first. So here's our SSH-D9050 root there. This is Tmux. I'm using in case you're wondering how I split the screen. Move this up a little bit. And I've already got proxy chain installed. Standard apt get install for proxy chain. We're going to go ahead and sudo vim slash etsy proxy chains. And port 9050 is the default setting for proxy chains. If you have Tor installed, proxy chains can do Tor. I'll do that in a separate video. But by default, 9050. So we'll go ahead and leave it at 9050 here. Let's exit out of there. But now, how does proxy chains work? So we're going to run the curl command ifconfig.co slash country. I'm in the United States. Simple enough. But if we add the command proxy chains in front of it, I'm in the United Kingdom now. Now what this does, we have this proxy set up here, port 9050, so SSH, SD 9050, we're logging into that DigitalOcean server. Then from there, the proxy chain connects, it makes a connection, it wraps our DNS response as well, because proxies can leak DNS information, so proxy chains by default out of the box will also grab all that DNS config and run those DNS queries across the proxy, and then it runs the command out of the proxy. So any command that you wanna run across here, for the most part, can be wrapped into a proxy chain to get that information. That includes, and we're gonna go ahead and fire up Firefox. So now we launched Firefox wrapped in proxy chains. And there's lots of things it's looking up. It's looking up all the things, but different pages I was at, uh, and let's go to, I have config.country again, United Kingdom. And let's go over here to preferences, proxy, no proxy settings. And the reason why, and that's the way proxy chains works, it's wrapping whatever you told it to launch in that proxy. This means we are now assumed the IP address of that DigitalOcean server. So when we look at it from this, we're still at that IP address if we go places like Google or wherever. We'll do a weather search again. Weather forecast, it thinks I'm in London. We close it, we just type Firefox again from the command line without adding proxy chains in front of it. Opens up just like normal. I have to make that CO country back in the United States, really simple. And this is really handy. If you have tools you need to run from the Linux command line and you want to launch them, but as the IP address of whatever you're proxied into, this becomes a very convenient way to do it. So what we're going to do up here at the top, exit out of this. We're going to go ahead and connect to my PFSense server at home.
All right, to connect to my PF sensor at home, SSH D 9050, we'll use the same proxy port. Then it's uh, LTS at home.tom, and we're going to go dash E1022. My PF server is at home.tom, which just is the host name to hide my public IP address. It's on port 1022, and LTS is the username we're going to use. Now we're into my PF sense. So go over down here, we'll open up Firefox. Nothing happened. I'm not in. Just to show you that it's not working, unless we go and close that. Type in proxy, chains, Firefox. We've wrapped Firefox and proxy chains. I'm right into my local network. No big deal. Simple. You can get into my Zen Orchestra at home. I didn't have the VPN. But obviously, you're probably thinking, okay, but then you have to remember to type this command out each time. That doesn't sound convenient at all. You'd be right. But don't worry. There's an even easier way to manage these via the SSH config so you can just jump into them anytime and create aliases. Let's go ahead and do that. We're going to go ahead and exit. We're going to go vim.ssh config. Now, if you don't have a .ssh config file configured, you can create a blank one, and this is a template for it. I have a lot of things configured in here because this is one of the ways that I don't have to remember the IP address or configuration settings or weird port numbers I put everything on. You save everything into a config file. We're going to go ahead and jump into SSH config. And yes, I blurred out all the different weird stuff that I have in there, but we're going to create this one here. It's host pfsense at Tom's house, host name home.tom, user LTS, port 1022, dynamic forward 9050. How does that work? Well, let's show you. So I'm going to go ahead and exit this. SSH, pfsense, home at Tom's. And we're in. Proxy chains. Uh, we'll go ahead and launch Firefox again for simplicity. And I'm in at my home network. Just like that. What if I wanted to add another? Like, let's say, uh, let's make one called Let's Go to London. So we're going to go ahead and exit out of this, exit out of this. And we'll go back to this SSH config. And we're going to add another host information. So we're going to go ahead and add this here. Let's type in host. Case, case sensitive, so it matters. Uh, let's call it Let's Go to London. Go. Oh. London. Whoops. Now that I spelled things right. Host name. We're just going to drop the IP address in here of that DigitalOcean droplet that I have set up in London. User root. This was on port 22, and you do have to implicitly list the port. Uh, and then we want the dynamic forward. Whoops. And MIC 9050. Now, if we type in SSH. Let's go to London. I'm now in that proxied into that. Then we're going to go ahead and proxy chain over to Firefox. And we're in London. So you can see you can save these from the command line and quickly launch or jump around between different proxies. Or you could you configure each proxy and configure different browsers to use different proxy settings. Kind of, there's a lot of different dynamic options to do here. And a lot of it, we save our client information through these SSH configs, especially when I'm working on a couple of projects. Uh, when I got to jump in and out, maybe have to log into a web browser to look at a printer or any of these different applications for our clients. It's really quick just to proxy in through their firewall. I'm in their network. I can browser in without disrupting one of my clients or happen to have remote access to one of the local computers there, and I'm in. And the last thing I'm going to show you that this will work with is I can actually SSH into more than just the firewall. So let's go ahead and exit out of this, exit out of the Skyfall proxy, and we'll go ahead and SSH to my house. So using those same aliases, I have an SSH, it's just SSH home. And that'll connect me to my home server here. All right, let's exit because I do not have that set up with a proxy. So let's add that D9050. SSH-D9050 home. Logs in, goes to Tom's house server, which is different than the PF Sense because this has an IP address of 192.168.1.5, but it still works. 
So if I type in proxy chains, we open up Firefox. DF sense. Now I'm coming in as 1.5. And let's open up another window to kind of show you one last thing of how that works and how PF sense might see this. So here's the PF sense login. We're going to split the screen down here again. LTS at home dot tom dash p one zero two two. We're not proxying this one. We're just logging in to show you what happens. So now we're sitting here, logged in as PF Sense SG one hundred local. And then when I log in here, we're going to go LTS and then type in the password successful user login from. 192.168.1.5 because that's the IP address of this particular computer. So this is when you're doing this, you can also use it for testing purposes. Maybe you have restrictions that you have to proxy in because of the way you've restricted web access to only a certain block of local IPs. And this is one of those features that you can do. So I pass through my PFSense to this particular box that I have behind the PFSense, but then PFSense, when I log into it, sees me logging in not remotely from this computer, 192.168.3.9, but locally, LTS user from here. It also does the same thing. If you SSH into the PFSense and proxy the PFSense, it sees it logging into itself. So it sees a local host login at that point. So hopefully this gets you started with SSH proxying and proxy chains is a lot of fun. It's a lot of uh, simple ways you can do just to jump into a client network without the need for a VPN, or even in the case I spun up the DigitalOcean server in London, but really any server you have on the internet located wherever that you spin up with a SSH and the proxy ports, you can just assume and start using it as a proxy. I do recommend using it like I have demonstrated here with an SSH tunnel, because if you're using with an SSH tunnel, you're encapsulating all the security as opposed to relying on whatever transport layer the proxy may be using. But hopefully this is helpful, get you started. There's a lot more fun you can have with this. I'll leave all links to the documentation uh, so you can do some more reading and have some more fun. Thanks. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe to this channel to see more content, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon, and maybe YouTube will send you a notice when we post. If you want to hire us for a project that you've seen or discussed in this video, head over to lawrencesystems.com where we offer both uh, business IT services and consulting services and are excited to help you with whatever project you want to throw at us. Also, if you want to carry on the discussion further, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can keep the conversation going. And if you want to help the channel out in other ways, we offer affiliate links below which offer discounts for you and a small cut for us that does help fund this channel. And once again, thanks again for watching this video and see you on next time.